Hello, everyone. Welcome to the session today. Today's topic, it is building multi-tenant routing and scaling with Envoy. I'm the speaker, Yimin Pan. I'm from the Amazon Web Service. Happy to be here to talk about the topic with you guys today. So a little bit self-introduction about myself. I'm the senior engineer from AWS based in Seattle. I'm the founding engineer of the AWS App Runner. I pro participated in building the stealth mode product from zero to one, and we GA'd in the 2021. The product I'm working um, activities closely in the AWS is the including App Runner, the Amazon ECS, Elastic Container Service, the AWS Fargate, which is focused on the serverless containers compute, and Elastic Beanstalk. So my expertise area focus on the cloud native containers and the serverless compute and open source. So I'm also pretty passionate in the open source community. I'm the founder and the maintainer of the cloud native and serverless meetup community. You can find me in the GitHub and the Twitter. I'm pretty active there. So I want to show a little bit the motivation to have this talk today. I want to share the journey from the end user point of view by using Envoy. I want to also give back to the community to share the lessons learned and experience by using Envoy as a builder and hope it brings value to the community and help the product grow. And uh, I also want to use this opportunity to uh, thanks and appreciate all the support from the Envoy community, no matter it is internal or external. By the way, um, Amazon has an internal interest group for the Envoy proxy uh, with like around 160 uh, people. I'm the founder and maintainer of that channel. I also want to thank to the platform and I want to use this platform for the future discussion and the communication. I'm a fan of KubeCon for years. I'm really happy and excited to be here to talk with you guys for the topic. A little bit of introduction for AppRunner. As I mentioned before, so AWS AppRunner's G8 in the 2021 is a fully managed service that makes it easy for builders to quickly deploy container web service and APIs at a scale with less and zero infrastructure experience required. Here is our official website. Feel free to check it out. So from the user point of view, the app runner provides managed experience for customers' app hosting, request routing, load balancing, and auto scaling, networking, the ingress, egress, both observability, CI CD deployment, and safe deployment, and more. So, customers just need to have their GitHub source code or the ECR image, private or public and deploy their image of source code connection to the app runner. App runner will directly make it up and running for your app, uh, web app and or API service. And app runner is going to uh, output outcome and public URL for clients to access. App runner is a multi-region supported and uh, it is mainly focused on API and the web server. It accepts the HTTP request and it supports the concurrent request. And it also focuses on the long time uh, running servers, which is today's world most popular and uh, um, typical traditional uh, workloads. To build App Runner, 
to support the management user experience for App Runner, including the request routing and load balancing. What's the responsibility of the request router? You may ask. So App Runner needs a request router on the backend to help online multi-tenant request routing in different AWS regions. And it provides the URL for customer to access and on the lines running app application instance for their containers. And we need a request router to be in the middle between the URL and application instances to do the routing, to do load balancing, and to do the traffic uh, splitting. Product requirement. I like this because this is the motivation. Multi regions, region expensible. Of course, we need to make sure we can build new regions all the time with the solution, with the existing architecture. You need to be multi-tenant. We are serving hundreds and millions customers as a platform and a solution. So we need a request router to be multi-tenant available. Auto scaling, we need to be scalable and we need to uh, face, because in the future we're gonna face more and more traffic and workloads. Safe deployment, of course, it is one of the basic requirements for the customer product. Observable, it needs to be manageable and provides necessary insights. So with the product requirements, the technical challenges will be obvious. There need to be high throughputs, high performance, high availability, high reliability. Think about your website, you don't want it to be down for a couple minutes or seconds even. Extensibility, of course, we need to build more and more features on top of it. Security. Large number of concurrent connections. As I, we mentioned, there we accept the concurrent requests, which means for the request router, there may be a large number of connections happen in the same time. Observability. It's different with product level observability. We need the request router also provide observability and visibility for builders to understand what's going on in the middle and what's going on um, for the application activity and workloads. So we think about the Anway based request router. Anway is an open source edge and service proxy designed for native cloud applications. It provides features like out of process architecture. It is pretty lightweight and portable. HTTP layer seven routing, gRPC ready and easy for builders build the microservice around it. Best in class observability provides necessary visibility for the system and service on the line. Microservice friendly. And it also provides managed the open source version available by the AWS App Mesh. So we choose Envoy as our request router base. I want to talk more a little bit the out of process architecture Envoy provided. So Envoy works with any programming language friendly. We can write the application in Go, in Java, in C++, and any other languages. Envoy can bridge the gap between all of them, and its behavior is identical, regardless of the application's programming language or the operating system they are running on. For App Runner, we are using ProtoBuff and we write the service in C++, in Java, in Golan. They can iterate with Envoy uh, with no gap, and it break out all the boundaries of programming languages. The out-of-process architecture is beneficial as it gives the consistency across the languages and application stacks. 
you can get an independent life cycle. Talking about building the envoy based request filter. So first, the building blocks. So Anway supports the bootstrap configuration, which is the key to make Anway up and running. Here we use the dynamic resources because the application instances change all the time. And looking at the architecture, this is a very typical Anway usage architecture you can find in any well. You, can, you should have a control plan to pass through all the configurations you need for Anway runtime. We will have a log and a metric system to collect and aggregate the water data and insights from the runway runtime activity. You should have a event streamer, which is stream out all the outputs of the runway activity and workloads. Talking about runway itself, there are four building blocks for the runway itself internal. So first one is listener. Listener is the name network location. For example, the IP address plus the port. So Anway received the request through the listeners. Roles. Roles is the configurations in the HTTP Connect Manager filter. Match the incoming requests like uh, uh, URI and handers and define where the traffic is sent. Clusters. Cluster is a group of upstream hosts that accept the traffic for a road. List of hosts or IP addresses on which the service is listening. Endpoints, which is a source application instance and the upstream IPs. We will talk about them one by one. First, the listeners. Listen, listener is the act, is the component which is listening all the external HTTP requests and it will operate on the package payloads, received requests and roll to the next component block. Roads. So we will be the CRUX of load balancing and layer seven request proxying layer. It maintains a map of the service URL to the application instance IPs and wrote incoming requests to a proper endpoints. It also mapping a domain from the service URL, for example, hello world here to the upstream endpoints. Clusters. You can treat Envoy clusters as the application service for here. Each service version is going to be assigned an Envoy cluster. And the configurations will be updated through the Envoy cluster discovery service. The short name is CDS. Endpoint. The upstream endpoints updated with the Envoy endpoint discovery service. The short name is EDS. And it supports the dynamic and auto scaling and also covers health check, which is part of it is the unhealthy endpoints reaper. I want to talk about the middle layer between the listen and roads. It's called HTTP Connection Manager, show name is HCM. HCM, it is a network layer filter it translates real bytes into HTTP. It handles access logging, request ID generation, tracing, handler manipulation, retry policy, timeout setting, traffic weights, and route waiters. For HCM, the road use the information from the incoming request, for example, the host or authority handlers, and matches it to an upstream cluster through the virtual host or routing rules. Actually, filters use the route configuration that contains all the route table for the HTTP routing. And the set of handlers can be specified to match the request. The router checks 
request the handles against all the specified handles in the road config. Some match includes the range present string invert match. HCM filters also support the query parameters matching, the TLS context matching, and the gRPC routing matching for routing. And the Anway supports traffic splitting to different roles within the same virtual host. We can split the traffic between the two or more upstream clusters. The traffic split ha happens on runtime percentage or weighted clusters. So Anway supports two types of the health check, active and passive. With active health check, Anway periodically sends a request to the endpoint to check its status. With the passive health check, Anway monitors how the endpoints respond to connections. You can use either of them depending on use case. Load balancing. Load balancing is very important because it is a way to distributing traffic between the multiple endpoints in a single service and a single upstream cluster. The reason to distribute traffic across multiple endpoints is because we want to make the best use of the resource. It helps the cost effective for the product or for your applications. Retries. And we allow the retries and a lot of setting the retry policy at the virtual host level at the HTTP Connect Manager and then also the road level based on the conditions. For example, if there's a 49 states code return from the endpoint, then we can set the retries. Then retries will happen the stimulously on the upstream of other available instance. We can set the retries on states code. We can set the retries on the priority level, depend on your use case. Circuit breaker. This pattern prevents additional failures managing access to fa failing services. It allows us to fail quickly and apply back pressure downstream as soon as possible. It is best practice. We can configure the breaker's threshold for each road priority separately and globally. Timeout. Anway supports multiple configurable timeouts depending on your scenarios. For example, there's a request timeout that specifies the amount of time Anway waits for the Intel request to be received. There are also idle timeouts represent when a downstream or upstream connection gets terminated if there are no active streams. Rate limiter. Anwe supports the global and the local rate limit to the upstream endpoints. We finished the Anwe self building blocks. Let's step back and see the old architecture, the control plan component. Generally, you can build a customized control plan for Anway runtime. It will be responsible for uh, service cluster discovery, CDS, and service endpoint discovery, EDS. And it was also responsible to passing all the root or other configurations necessary for Anway runtime activity to the Anway. It can be built as the GRP server listening on a defined port. Anway gun needs to be updated with the latest service information at runtime. So Anway discovered dynamic resources by curing the management servers using XDS, which is full name is the discovery service APIs. The dynamic resource I mean here, including the clusters and endpoints. 
Envoy request resources wield subscriptions by initializing gRPC stream from Envoy client to the management server. Talking a little bit more about the cluster and endpoint discovery, cluster can be configured on Envoy through the CDS discovery service API and endpoint going to be updated through the EDS discovery service API. All of these APIs are open source. An app runner used the CDS API dynamically update clusters and EDS to update endpoints per cluster. Logins and metrics is the other component which is important to collection all the insights and activity data. How we can configure exposed metrics locally and a static sync that receives the metrics emitted from Envoy and do the order collection and aggregation. For the metrics such as 2xx, 5xx, request count, can eventually forward it to logs and metric service. It can be built as a gRPC service listening on defined port. And all the collected metrics and logs can be routed to the uh, popular cloud native observability solutions. For example, the cloud watch, which is for metrics and logging and the managed service for permissions, for monitoring and open telemetry or Grafana or X-ray. The last component is the event streamer. It is responsible for reporting service status and health check results for the Envoy runtime. It also can be built as the gRPC service listening on defined port. And uh, all of this health check and status result will be used in the supporting service like a safe deployment, blue green deployment, or automatic scaling, load balancing, and request routing. So we finish all the functionalities of uh, Envoy related ecosystem. Let's talk about how to make Envoy based system in production readiness. So besides the functional readiness, we need to make sure the capacity management is under control. It includes the CPU and the memory consumption because it is high performance, high throughput. You want to make sure there's nothing which is out of the expectation. We also need to make sure the performance and the scalability for the Envoy system. And same time, the security, for example, DDoS, how you prevent the there's uh, DDoS, which is in the place. And also on operational readiness items, including the monitors and alarms. To ramp up, so the Envoy brings values in building a very solid request routing with the many features, high throughput and the performance requests, routing and load balancing, portability, extensibility, reliability and availability. Of course, it provides very, very good observability, easy for builders managing the online system and uh, extends the system to build new things on top of it. With all the Envoy related topic finished, I also want to introduce a little bit on the AppRunner's public roadmap. AppRunner as a product has a public roadmap in the GitHub. We receive and collect customer request, and also we interact with customer directly, actively on roadmap to share our plan, share what we are working on. There are also a couple items which is related to request routing and proxying in the app runner. For example, the private service support, additional X forwarded handler support, 
and WAF support and configuration timeout support. We are happy to uh, receive your feedback and uh, feel free to check it out and let us know how we can do better. This is all the things I want to talk about here. So thank you again to be in the session. And also I will leave the rest of the time for the Q&A. Thanks.